on drugs, which has killed almost 4,000 people. The two leaders held talks on the sidelines of the ASEAN summit. Our Southeast Asia correspondent, Jonathan Head, has more. President Trump's odyssey through Asia ends here in the Philippines. Surrounded by countries which in the past look to America for leadership, but are increasingly going their own way. So what would Mr. Trump offer to stem the decline in U.S. influence? I'm here to advance peace, to promote security, and to work with you to achieve a truly free and open Indo-Pacific, where we are proud and we have sovereign nations and we thrive and everybody wants to prosper. It was all pretty general. No one knows quite what Mr. Trump's new catchphrase, Indo-Pacific, means. Well, time to go up. This, though, was the meeting everyone was waiting for. Like Mr. Trump, his host, President Duterte, is a tough-talking septuagenarian who's lashed out in the past at U.S. concern over his human rights record. We've had a great... Here, though, it was all bonhomie. Human rights were never mentioned. At the ASEAN inaugural dinner... Mr. Duterte even serenaded his guests with a none too tuneful rendition of a Filipino classic. <laughs> the orders he said of President Trump. No one expected President Trump to make as much of human rights as his predecessors did. But not to mention them at all on this extended tour of Asia sends a message that the United States can no longer be relied on to back the embattled groups who were fighting against the many attacks on democracy and civil rights in this region. It's often said that half of diplomacy in this region, where the appearance of harmony matters so much, is just showing up. President Trump has shown that Asia does matter to his administration. And now for the ASEAN handshake. Though some of the ASEAN traditions did prove to be a bit of a handful. And we were left none the wiser as to what the future role of the United States will be in Asia. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Manila.